So some people still don't really understand the Ido Potel method. What is it and how can you practice it yourself? Now, let's excuse the windy, horrible day. I just sat down in a puddle and I've got a wet ass. But I'll make the most of this kind of sunny weather in the English winter right now, coming into spring soon. But essentially, the Ido Potel method has quite a few kind of cores to it. Each of these cores branch out to different skills and different aspects of what you may see on YouTube, on the demonstration videos and on the lessons. So let me break this down for you. What I understand of it may help you guys understand a little bit further too, so let's hop in. Now, contrary to popular belief, the Edel Portal method isn't something new. You could argue that people have been doing it far before Edel Portal himself was ever born. You've only got to look at circus performers and martial artists to really see this. Now, saying this is no different than saying MMA wasn't created by Bruce Lee, because surely there were people before him who did multiple martial arts at once. Now, something both Bruce Lee and Ido Portal have done is they have popularized the idea of practicing these things as a whole, if that makes sense. So Bruce Lee took martial arts and made mixed martial arts. He took all these different aspects from different martial arts and pushed them into one, Jeet Kune Do. Now, Ido Portal has done something very similar. He's taken the floreo from capoeira and the body weight strength from gymnastics, etc., etc., and he's put it into one practice, of course, popularized under his name. Now, because he has taken these practices from all over the show and put them into one kind of core practice, one generalized practice, He's not a master of anything, but more so a jack of all trades. You can't become the best at something if you divert your energy to different things. It's like um, a plant. You can't have five plants grow as big as one if you put all the resources into those five plants. You put every resource you have into one plant, it's going to grow a lot bigger than the others. So essentially, the Udo Portal method is a generalized practice. You become a jack of all trades because you practice many different disciplines. Now, these disciplines, of course, can be broken up into branches, as I said before. Now, up the very top, we have skill. Skill is in everything you do when it comes to this practice, whether it be a skillful muscle up or whether it be the flow rayo movement. Everything has skill. Skill is the ultimate kind of top end there. Everything works towards it. Now, to get skill, there are multiple things that you do. There's strength practice. There is balance, coordination, reaction time, and movement patterns. Essentially, there's plenty more, but these are the main ones. Now, with these, you can really split those up into different practices. Of course, the best way to build balance may be on a slack line or on a hand railing. Balancing like that, where strength would be with muscle-ups, weighted dips, and compound movements with a barbell. Very simple. Now, the thing here is, how do you split this into a practice? How do you get all these things in one? So essentially, when you look for a stereotypical warm, uh, sorry, workout, you're gonna have a warm up right here. Now with the Edel Town method, this a lot of the time will be developing a skill. It can be juggling, juggling. It can be some mobility drills, mobility. Oops, mobility. It can be, um, again, balance. If you've got a slack line, amazing. It can be um, with the tennis ball as well. Tennis ball warm-ups are huge. I've done a video on that. You can see that here. So this is essentially how you warm up. You get your body moving. You get all the joints going. At the same time, you're developing reaction time and speed and coordination. Um, it's a really efficient way of doing things. So when it comes to structuring, you know, structuring a workout, these are generally the warm-ups you want to be doing. And really, a... Warm-up can be as long as you like. It really depends on what you're doing. If you're warming up for you know, some really intense, heavy impact, you need to warm up a bit more specifically and a bit longer than if you were just do a normal kind of average workout where it's not too strenuous. You're more so just hitting the muscles, um, resistance exercise. So that's essentially the warm-up there. Now, it's up to you which way you do this. Typically, as a 
personal trainer myself, we would say do things that require the most attention, the things that may be the most dangerous first in order to avoid um, any injuries, potential injuries. So this is, if you're doing the strength training, so resistance, for example, resistance training, we would be saying do your muscle-ups on the gymnastic rings. So muscle-ups, do your compounds. Obviously, when I refer to compounds, muscle-ups are compounds, but I'm also talking with a barbell, you know, deadlifts and and cleans and, and squats and stuff like that. So this will be your whole kind of workout uh, resistance wise. And this is again, going to be specific to what you're trying to learn. So essentially, if you are trying to become better at, um, you know, that, that locomotion flow, then really you want to be developing a lot of strength around the shoulders. So maybe some overhead presses, some pike handstand pushups, things like that. And this is going to be for a lot of volume because it's not it's very specific for the training you're doing. So you want high volume. This is anywhere from, say, five upward sets, um, just enough to really hit the muscles and really get you working there. No point in doing two sets because it's not really going to tire you out too much. Um, so essentially, that would be the resistance there. Then we can move on to more of the um, kind of skill and movement practice. Here we go, skill and movement. Perfect. So with the skill and movement, we're really talking about the things you need to develop. So specific to parkour, it would be jumps, it would be flips. Um, with the Udo Portal method, this is when you would be practicing your um, the three-stage kind of uh, isolate, integrate, improvise. So that's, that's a huge one, really. So the three eyes. So that means to isolate a movement, to integrate those movements together, and then to improvise the movement. This is how you'll develop the skill and the practice of moving. Um, And then you can really, again, you want to spend a huge amount of time here because this is the quality of movement you will develop um, kind of through here. And then, of course, you can throw in a few other things, specific skills you might want to learn, uh, maybe a bit of, um, what's it called, like joints, um, prehab, just to make sure you don't get any severe injuries there. But otherwise, you can then move into a cool down, which can just be a bit of rolling out, a bit of stretching. And that essentially will roll up the the practice itself, the workout itself. Now, Now, one last comment I do want to make is this is not the only way to practice the method. This is just an efficient way to get it in a conventional workout way. There are PDFs online which people have shared who have been coached by Edo Potau and his team. And they, some of them are more based around flexibility, mobility and movement training as the whole workout. But you can have separate days focusing on different things. You can have everything in one day, one session just like this. There's a range of different methods. Now, I hope you found this video somewhat informative. If you did, please do leave a like, maybe share this video. I am genuinely trying to become a reliable source of information for people who are curious on generalizing their movement practice and just to become more active in general. So if you would help me out, give a like, share it, help me out with the YouTube algorithm. I would really appreciate that. Only if you think it's worth it. If not, all good. Otherwise, I will be seeing you guys in a little bit. All the best.